One of the most memorable Love After Lockup moments I can think of is the time when Kevin knocked Curtis out after Curtis showed up to pick Kevin's girlfriend up from the halfway house. And it seems like since Curtis was knocked out on the show, it has just been all downhill from there. I've covered a lot of what's been going on with him outside of the show. It seems like it's been one thing after another. He ended up getting robbed by some former roommates. He had some couple steal his truck. He got his truck back and then it went missing again. It's been a lot. And now it looks like Things may have finally hit its peak because a man is currently locked up for murder. So shout out to Kevin. He actually sent me this article and it says a Fort Worth man is charged with murder after police said he purposely ran over a man in his car after an argument on July 5th. So this wasn't even a week ago. Fort Worth police arrested 34-year-old Curtis King in the death of Ellis Latavion Laurent Smith, who is 35 years old, and the officers were called to the 2400 block of Meacham, I hope I'm saying that correctly, Boulevard the night of July 5th to find Smith critically injured. He was taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. The Tarrant County Medical Examiner's Office has ruled his death a homicide caused by blunt force trauma, according to the medical examiner's website. This is what happened according to the police. They claim that Curtis and the victim ended up getting into this big fight over a previous business transaction and they both ended up pulling knives out on each other and they're threatening each other and then Curtis went running to his truck he jumped inside and he ran over the man and then he just drives off left him there the police eventually were able to catch up with Curtis. He was arrested and booked into jail on Monday, where he has been ever since. And according to the wife of the victim, she claims her and her husband had just moved to Texas from Georgia. She has started a GoFundMe trying to raise funds in order to bring her husband back home. And she's trying to raise 5000 And so far, she's raised $1,164. She said, my name is Shakavion Smith. My husband is Ellis Smith. And last night, I received a call that my husband was hit by a car. I later found out that it wasn't an accident and I spent four hours at the hospital thinking that my husband was stable only to be told that they could not share any information due to the ongoing investigation. I still have not seen my husband's body. That's heartbreaking. And she said, we moved to Texas for a fresh start, which proved to be more challenging than we anticipated. We have been struggling financially due to my enrollment in nursing school, which we paid for out of pocket, in addition to our regular bills. To help maximize our funds, we decided to cut our life insurance policies, thinking we had more time. We are originally from Georgia. Our family is there and we have no one here in Texas. My goal is to raise funds to take my husband home. He was a father to nine kids, four biological and five that are mine, whom he loved and took care of as his own. He had a passion for helping people, especially those experiencing homelessness. I want to give everyone their chance to say goodbye to him. I want to raise funds to take him back to Georgia and give him a proper funeral. Any and every contribution will help. I don't have a service date because I'm trying to raise whatever I can as soon as possible. Please help me get my husband home. Thank you in advance. Then she shared an update after she raised like a little over a thousand dollars and she said that I appreciate everyone who's donated. The cost to fly him home is too costly. I spoke with our family and cremation is best. So we sat in amount to cover that cost. Again, thank you so much. And then she shared a picture with him. And according to a source, this was allegedly all over a freaking $20 bicycle. One person commented under a post talking about this. 
This Heather girl said, I had just talked to the man that died an hour before it happened. He was really a cool guy. Rip GA. And then she responded to a comment and she said it was over $20 in a bicycle. Okay, so it just wasn't a bicycle. It was $20 in a bicycle. Still freaking ridiculous to take someone's life over that. And she said that the dude was only five foot tall and about 120 pounds. So it sounds like Curtis could have just squared up with him. But I think what happened was Curtis became so triggered because he's been robbed so many times before. I know that Curtis had pretty much lost everything. He was battling homelessness. And the most dangerous people are always the people that don't have anything to lose. And then someone posted, if anyone can help them out, that would be great. The guy that took my little brother's uncle, Ellis. Ellis and his siblings lost their mom a few years ago due to COVID. So they really don't have anyone. And then talks about he was always a nice guy whenever I was around him. Tiffany dodged a major bullet because if he was capable of doing that to that dude, then he would have been capable of doing something like that to her. And he just seems like he has not been the same since he got knocked out by Kevin. But I had a source claim that he wasn't doing good before he was on the show either. And he was arrested back in April this year for possession. And I'm pretty sure that's when he got just arrested for having like a vape pen with marijuana in it. That was a freaking disaster because he had just bought him this camper to attach to his truck and that's what he was living in. And he was so proud of it and it took him so long to save up for that thing. And as soon as he got it, he gets arrested for this vape pen. And apparently he decided to give this girl that was on drugs that was the passenger in his truck the keys to his truck because she promised him she was going to hold on to his keys and everything till he got out of jail but she did the exact opposite she tried to pretty much sell everything he had in the truck and the camper and try to run off with everything he did eventually get the truck back but i don't think he got the camper and everything else back he was arrested in October of 2023 for possession of a controlled substance penalty group 2, less than 1 gram, and speeding 20 miles over the speed limit. And then he was arrested in July of 2023 for possession of a controlled substance. I almost wonder if he was just trying to act like on social media he got busted with a vape with THC in it when really it was something more hardcore because he didn't want to look bad because it said penalty group 2 in the description of the possession charge he claimed that was the THC vape. But in Texas, the penalty group 2 includes PCP, MDMA, mescaline, THC, other than plant Mary Jane, which is edible slash slash vapes. So it makes it sound like, you know, a THC vape would not fall into that category like he was claiming. He had a possession charge in July of 2023, and then he was arrested in March of 2022 for aggravated assault causing serious bodily injury. So the signs were there with charges like this. And this was actually when they were showing his season with Kevin. I guess he ended up missing the knockout by Kevin that premiered on the show because he was locked up at the time for this charge. And I never got the exact details for this charge, but for it to be aggravated, trying to cause serious bodily injury, he had to really be trying to hurt somebody. You typically have to leave some serious wounds for it to be an aggravated charge. So this is just a sad story all around. Like this dude needs to be in jail at this point and I don't see him getting out of prison for probably at least 25 years. But I'll definitely be following this story and keep you guys updated. I still can't believe he did all this over $20 in a freaking bicycle. But that is it for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below.